They are two of the most electric players on the PBA Tour. The pro with the fro, Kyle Troop, and the Swedish powerhouse, Jesper Svensson. Today, this duo teams up once again as they attempt to recapture the title here at the Mark Roth. Marshall Holman, PBA doubles. on the PBA Tour, and we're going to double your pleasure from the Indy. Ten of the best in the biz go tag teaming for a PBA title. I see you, kid. Great sign today. The uh, cast includes major titleists, former rookie and players of the year, and athletes from the United States, Finland, England, and Sweden, courtesy of your number one seed, Jesper Svensson there on the right. We're going to start with a pair of European-American partnerships. Don Barrett, Anthony Simonson taking on Osku Palerma and Jacob Buttrup. Your three seeds, Chris Prather and 2018 Player of the Year, Andrew Anderson. 20-somethings, EJ Tackett and Marshall Kent are the two seeds, and the fire and ice duo of Kyle Troop and Jesper Spenson are in the top spot. We welcome you to Indianapolis. Rob Stone, the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson here with you. And we sit week eight on the tour. Haven't seen a repeat winner yet. We might actually see two repeat winners this weekend. Yeah, and that's because Jesper won last week and then uh, Kyle Troop won in Jonesboro earlier in the season. And these two are our number one seeds. But I mean, what a show Jesper Svensson put on last week as the number one seed uh, for the Indianapolis Open. And what a great title match against Sean Maldonado. Commanding performance. And a couple weeks ago, yeah. Kyle Troop able to get a victory. And now the two of them combined as the one seed. And they know about winning doubles titles. Yeah, they really do. It, because they actually won this event in 2017 back in Portland, Maine. But these two guys absolutely ran away with this tournament, leading by over 500 pins. I mean, they were just completely dominant. In fact, Jesper was so dominant, he would have made match play by himself. Insane. Yeah, crazy. absolutely insane. In fact, the Iceman and Kyle standing by with Kimberly Pressler. Kyle, Jesper, you guys dominated coming in today. Why do you think that you guys did so well on this dual oil pattern? Well, Kimberly, it, it all started with this man throwing a lot of strikes and qualifying. I was trying to keep up the best I could, and, and uh, we have really great chemistry. We have a lot of fun together, and we really carried that momentum going into match play. I tried to throw as many strikes as him every game, and it seemed to work out pretty good for us. So let's talk about that chemistry, because you are a very serious guy, but when you bowl with him, you guys seem to bring the best out of each other. How much do you love bowling doubles with him? Like he said, we had a good time, and, and you know, it takes a little bit longer for me to really get excited and kind of go crazy, but uh, I hope tonight, together with him and uh, all of you guys, that we can uh, do some damage to these lanes. All right, well, thank you, guys. All right, Kimberly, thank you. Randy, our format, well, the field size started with 56 teams. We're down to five. Each player bowled 14 games of qualifying as an individual, so the team had 28 games of qualifying to get to the top 16. From there, it was 16 games of round robin Baker. And of course, Baker, one player, one frame. Next frame, your teammate takes over. So we are set for our opening matchup. Dom Barrett, Anthony Simonson, your five seeds. Here's the introduction. The number five seeds with eight PBA Tour titles from Colchester, England, Dom Barrett. His partner has seven PBA Tour titles from Little Elm, Texas, Anthony Simonson. Dual oil pattern this week, the great Marshall Holman pattern on the right, 37 feet. The players are going to attack it much steeper through the front part of the lane and play the edge. Mark Roth pattern, the great Mark Roth, 42 feet in length. Five feet longer, the players are gonna play a little bit deeper and a little bit straighter, but you can see where the break points are. Look for the bowling balls in that area where the blue circles are down lane. You say play the edge on that right lane. Yeah, you, you're, you're not fooling. No, you're no, not you, fooling. You, and you love that. I do, but it also scares me yeah. silly. I was watching a lot of warm-ups. EJ Tackett, about five times I said, that's going in the gutter. Yeah. That's going, nope, it didn't. 
hooking at the last possible moment. We begin the Mark Roth, Marshall Holman PBA doubles championship with Colchester, England's finest. Dom Barrett, so good to see him back. Well, he's one of the best out here, and I don't think we get to see him enough. He likes to use a lot of tricks. Very versatile player. The number four seeds with seven PBA Tour titles from Tempe, Arizona, Jacob Buttruff. His partner has five PBA Tour titles from Espoo, Finland, Osku Palerma. I just like hearing the phrase Espoo, Finland. <laughs> I love listening to Kurt von Kruger introduce the he guys. He's so good, isn't he, he? He gets really into it. I love it. Very interesting combination. And Kimberly, in a moment, is going to have more on how these two partnerships came about. Because at one point, Osku and Dom were partners. Yes, sir. No more. And you can see how straight he's going on that right lane with urethane. And you know Jacob Butcher's going to throw urethane on the left lane. Look how straight that is for a two-hander with all that power. Remember, we saw Osku at the start of the season in Dallas, the Hall of Fame Classic. Certainly hasn't been the 2020 like last year was for Jacob Fletcher for 2019. Gets a strike here, though. He was in contention until very late for Player of the Year honors last season. This year, he admitted to us, it's been rough. I've been missing cuts at the majors, and frankly, it's just been hard for him to accept. On the flip side, Anthony Simonson is right in the mix oh, yeah. for Player of the Year honors this season. Just 23 years old. Heartbreaking loss a couple of weeks ago at the tournament or at the U.S. Open. The U.S. Open against Jason Belmonte. Simon on the right lane. Oh, 10 pin. It's not going to be that kind of day, is it, 10 pin? Well, remember when I talked about the oil pattern, the difference between uh, this week and, and this exact same oil pattern we used last week. But there's more oil in the middle part of the lane, which helps push the bowling balls to the outside part, helps them retain energy, and then hook back. If you remember a couple of weeks ago in the majors, how tough the oil patterns were, and I talked about how flat those patterns were. Not this week. This week was intended to have high scores, and all they had to do is put a little more oil in the middle of the lane. So Dom Barrett up now, and Kimberly, he used to be partners with his competitor right now, Osku Palerama. Absolutely. So Osku and Dom are very good friends, and as you mentioned, they used to be doubles partners, actually made two TV finals together before, but today they are in this with different partners. And when I asked how these changes came about, Don said that he and Osku had an honest conversation about really wanting to make a run at winning this title, and they needed some solid young blood to do that. And he also said that he thinks that they both traded up. And yeah, they both wanted to go a little younger, a little sexier, a little more full of life, and someone who can strike it a lot. Yeah, it sounds like a bad episode of Wife Swap. Right. Good, honest conversation. We're putting honest <laughs> in quotation marks. Like, it's not you, it's, it's me, <laughs> yeah, Randy. Sure. <laughs> Talking to uh, Palerma and Butcher yesterday ahead of the show. Osku with another strike. And it was fascinating. It, it was almost like one of those longtime married couples from Long Island or Boca where they were kind of bickering and sniping at each other and maybe picking a little bit. I think that's more Osku's kind of fatherly feel over the younger Jacob Buttruff. Osku 36, Buttruff 25. Oh, look at that. He's thrown a purple urethane. I wonder how many of those he has. Leaves the double wood on the verge of a hand bone, not to be. Outside the target line there on that last shot by almost three boards. 
at the break point and makes the ball come in light, leaving the 3 9. There's his teammate, Palermo. Covers that one nicely. Simonson steps up, native of Little Elm, Texas. Boy, he just annihilated the U.S. Open field a couple weeks ago, as you mentioned, yeah. but eventually fell to Jason Belmonte. Randy, let's go back to 2016, National Bowling Stadium, one of our favorite venues in Reno. The unlikely duo of Connor Pickford and Anthony Simonson, they qualified first for this Roth Holman Championship. Oh, yeah. Simonson was just 18 yeah. years old. Yeah. Amazing. Pickford 23 in his second TV appearance, and they took care of uh, Blanchard and Gomez to win the title there. Don Barrett using results. Looking for results. And finding results! Messenger doing its job! TV Messenger. It's just a beautiful game, and what a great touch he has at the release point. Look at the rotation, and then head pin to the sidewall, and 10 pin to the blue tent. Barrett with strikes in the first, third, and fifth. Tight one here. Osku steps up to close out the fifth. Purple urethane for Osku. Osku just took a re-rack. You see those hash marks, if you will, underneath their names. Just one more re-rack left. Simons and Barrett have both. Osku gets them all to drop. And you see the plus minus there with the max score. So if you're unfamiliar with the plus minus, that's because we always assume that the next ball is gonna be a strike. So the plus minus is an accurate description of the score of the frame that bowler is in. Max score and plus minus could be different depending on whether or not the player is on a strike. So it'll have to be another spare attempt here from Jacob. separating these two teams. And when we return, we're gonna have a flashback to the reigning, let's call them the power couple in the PBA doubles activity. That one's next, plus the conclusion of match number one. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling for promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you. Log on to GoBowling.com. All right, we go back to 2018. Long time buddies and your number one seeds, Jason Belmonte, Bill O'Neill, captured the Roth Holman PBA Doubles Championship. So in our Flow Bowling Tournament highlights, we focus on how they did this year. They entered in fifth place with just one game left. Yeah, position round got real tight for a lot of teams. Belmo splits here in the seventh. So it was up to O'Neill. He needed all three in the tenth to tie their match, which would have kept them in the top five. He gets the first hit, gets this one just a little bit wide, and a little unlucky leaving that seventh pin. They missed the top five by four pins. Yeah, they finish in sixth. So Buttruff and Palermo leapfrogged them. Kyle Troop, Jesper Svensson, easily, never in doubt, yeah. as your one seats. Huge 
huge separation between your one seeds and your two seeds this week, Randy. Yeah, a troop, a troop in uh, Jesper Svensson just ran away and hid from the rest of the field. Just complete dominance. Jesper himself, if he bowled alone, knocked down enough pins to qualify for match play. Insane. Kyle Troop was just along for the ride. Well, that's a great horse, right? Right, right. I mean, baby, I, ride I, that I horse. could be a jockey on that horse. A couple good horses in today's event, oh, oh, yeah. by the way. Yeah, here's one right uh, here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anthony Simonson. This is a young man that you have to put into the category of future face and maybe even to a point current face of the PBA. Yeah, without question. I mean, uh, we talk about how he's already he already has Hall of Fame credentials. The only thing that he has to add to what he's already done is he needs 20 years on tour. <laughs> he's only 23, right? This is already his seventh oh, year. On the, it's one of those numbers where you have to keep tracking back and going, wait, yeah. what? Are you sure this is right? That's got to be a typo on the notes. Nope. And he is paired up this week with Dom Barrett. 10 year pro from England. So so you said Anthony has been a member for seven <laughs> years and Dom 10. Right. And Dom's 11 years older than Anthony is. <laughs> 10 pin shy Spinner. being perfect on that left lane. So again, it shows you the plus minus of being even. We'll get that scoreboard back up for you in a second as we watch the six wrap around the 10. And a nice shot there by Dom Barrett. Yeah, Dom telling us the other day, this is a title you can compete for if you are with one of the top guys on the tour. That's what Kimberly talks about in our last segment. They decided to kind of have a, a mutual parting of ways, and then I think he and Osku both feel like they might have upgraded in grabbing some younger talent. Right. Guys who can consistently strike it. And then kind of help them out. Maybe some of that veteran leadership to get them another title. As you take a look at the max numbers there on the far right. And again, even though it shows even, the max scores are different, and that's because we're assuming that there'll be a strike in the seventh frame for Palermo, which would then even out the max score. Left the four. So you see how he got nine, and the max score now changes to 247, which is exactly what they can shoot. If he would have struck there, his max score was 258, and that's the difference with max score and the plus minus. Oski throw it about 30 miles an hour with his thumb in and his spare ball. Now he's using his two-handed two release, throwing that plastic ball. And we asked him why was that when we saw him do that at the Hall of Fame Classic. And he said it was just too much wear and tear on his body. And we were talking with Jacob and, and, and Kimberly asked him, hey, any injuries? And, and Osu was giving him grief. Like, come on, like we all we all get banged up. We all have finger problems, right? But Jacob said, yeah, I kind of split my finger right about here. I didn't get a good look at it. You did. I did. Looked like somebody hit him in the finger with an ax. <laughs> That's not good. No. It, it was, According to my sources. Yeah, yeah, it was awful. But it was great. Oscar showed zero to negative sympathy oh, yeah. Yeah, for him, right? You know, out here when you when you got a, a cut on your finger, and I mean, we used to get it. The, the worst part, spot ever was at the base of your thumb, because when you put your thumb in the ball, all the weight of the ball would sit there, and it, it was almost impossible to bowl. You couldn't keep it together. You try to glue it shut. The only thing that you could do is suture it closed, and then you can't bowl. That was the worst cutter. But nobody's going to feel sorry for you when you got a boo boo what on was, your hand. What was the uh, boo boo on your hand? What was the advice you handed to him? It was. Uh, what was the ointment to put on and the Band-Aid? Oh, Neil, Neil Scorn? Neil Scorn and a Band-Aid. I mean, but Osku confirmed what I said. He says, 
you got to put something on it to, to get the heel. Now, is it something we could light on fire? Is this a, a light on fire listen, finger type situation listen, or no? I'm, I'm part pyro. You can light anything on fire. <laughs> Strike for Simonson. By the way, have, have you noticed the uh, change from the plastic water bottles to the PVA branded that's, water containers? Man, that's our new owners, man. They're on it. They be, are. They, they, there'll be no crinkling nope. of plastic <laughs> water bottles <laughs> here on out. Listen, you could, if you had like, you, you could kind of hit. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, you could yeah. ding up the side of it with a with a pen or a pencil or Don't something. Don't give anybody ideas. Here's Dom up to we begin the ninth. Chip four, nine, ten, it looked like. Well, if you show that that one. I like they're slow enough. Go around yeah. it a bit more. You heard him say, get around it a little bit more, and that ball changed direction down lane a little harder. Watch this, Rob. Four, nine, ten, last to go. Dom was explaining it to Anthony. I'm fairly sure Anthony understood about 10% of what Dom was saying. <laughs> Why do you say that? He's got, a, he's got a good proper English accent. Hmm. Yeah. It's not. It's not a um, Scottish accent where you just go tougher. Forget it. Yeah. yeah you, I don't know like, what you say. Yeah. No. I... It, was, it was great. Dom, Osku, myself. A nice little uh, soccer conversation oh! last night after the meetings. Jeremy yeah. gets all ten to drop. So there you go, the max score, 236 for Buttruff and Palermo, 248 Simonson and Dom Barrett. Hit them thin, watch them spin, the old late great Billy Waylu phrase. And it's, you know, it's, it's really nice to see Osku again. Like this is the second time we've seen him this season. He struggled for a long time. Everybody's like, why is this guy not bowling better? He'll be saying the same about Buttruff this season. Gets all 10 to drop there. Osko, a bit of a, a, a caregiver, if you will, this week, keeping his eye on Watruff and those two click. Boy, watch out, huh? Yeah, they've got a lot of talent on today's telecast. And I think there's 61 titles and 11 majors combined on the show today. Buttruff looking to get his team into the mid 230s. Oh, 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 oh. Now then, Simonson's going to get up on the right lane, and he'll need a strike nine spare to win this match if Buttruff strikes on this next ball. Whatever Buttruff does on this ball, on this next shot, unless he throws it in the gutter, which won't happen. Um, Simonson's going to need first ball strike in the 10th. And also interesting, it's the young guns for both teams that are closing things out. That's how you close out a 10th. Yeah, that was after back-to-back -back soft seven, so Jacob Butcher made the proper adjustment and then flushed three in the 10th. So Buttruff applying the late pressure to team Barrett Simonson. It will be Simonson, the 23-year-old. He's already won two majors, stepping up. Strike nine spare, right there in front of you. There's your strike. Nine spare works, the strike would be even better. Some deep breathing going on there.
strike will win it. Nine spare would also be enough. Oh, yeah. Got to take care of the 10 pin. Got to make it. 95% of the time on the tour, single pin 10 is dropped. You know, every time you talk about spare percentage, you have a golden opportunity that, that you never use. I'll get to that when we come back after this match. I thought you were going to say I'm setting, setting up an ultimate jinx for these guys. To move on. Got it. <laughs> That's why math is important here. That's Didn't need a double, but he got enough. Buttruff Palermo is done. Simonson, Barrett, move on. Coming up next, an update on the godfathers of this doubles bowling event. Mark Roth and Marshall Holman next. Last week, we were here at the Royal Pin Woodland in Indy for the Go Bowling PBA Indianapolis Open. Yes, for Svensson, the Iceman, was your one seed. How about the 10th frame he had, huh? Well, it was a great match, and it came down to this shot right here, and that sealed the deal for Jesper. Even though he had eight strikes in the game, his biggest shot was converting that spare. And that win makes him now just one title away from Hall of Fame eligibilities. We take a look at our updated playoff points list, the top eight receive first round buys and right now Svensson is receiving that by Belmonte on top of the list. The top 24 go on to the PBA playoffs. All the numbers will be calculated and finalized after the USBC Masters in Reno. So that cut line right now, let's see who's sitting on the north side and the south side of it. Wes Malott in a good position at the moment at least. Hard to believe Jacob Buttrips in 30th. Right? Disappointing, frustrating yeah. season for Jacob Buttruff. Still has time to make it up. And again, the PBA playoffs begin April 6th. Coverage on FS1 coming your way from Norco, California, which is just outside of Los Angeles. And there's a reason it's called the Mark Roth, Marshall Holman PBA doubles championship. Randy, together, these guys made five doubles TV finals. Yeah, won three times. They were a, a pretty scary doubles. Uh, team to go up against. It was like them, and then if they didn't make the telecast, it was Steve Cook and Mike Albee. There they are winning another one. And then a couple of years ago, Mark Roth throwing out the first ball. That's awesome. With Marshall Holman as well. Unfortunately, Mark could not be here with us today, but he did send along this note. Sorry I couldn't make the show, but I want to say hello to my doubles partner, Marshall. And Hello to the bowlers and my PBA friends. Also a big thank you to the fans for your well wishes for my recovery. I'm working hard. Good luck to all the bowlers. And Mark, you know we're thinking of you as you continue to recover from a recent stroke. And let's use this opportunity, because we do love Mark so, yes, so much, to remind our audience just how almost invincible this guy was when he was at his best. Uh, I mean, he did some things out here that's never been done yeah. before. You know, he's kind of the father of the, of the power game. Uh, but think about this stat. So in 78 and 79, he won 14 tournaments. He won eight and then six. 14. Yeah, but I think his most impressive stat was from 77 to 79, he bowled for the title right. 33 times. And he would often book travel for his wife weeks in advance of the TV. Well, it's something you and I don't even do. Right, well, there was this one <laughs> tournament. It was the World Open in Chicago. And he would go to the tournament, and then he would buy a plane ticket for his wife for the TV show before the tournament started. Yeah. Mark, we're thinking of you. Here's your partner, Marshall Holman, standing by with Kimberly. Thanks, guys. So, Marshall, sadly, Mark could not be here. Have you spoken to him recently? I have. I've spoken to him a couple times the last few weeks. And, you know, he had a serious stroke in, in November. He is progressing, but uh, still got a ways to go. And, Mark, we love you, we miss you, and it's not the same here without you. Absolutely. Now let's talk about these matches because these 10 guys out here, eight of them are rising stars in the PBA. So what are your thoughts on all of these up and coming stars and the new generation of the bowlers? I think it's great. It's, you know, it's a different game than when I bowled. There's a lot more power. Uh, these youngsters are, are great. They're, they're taking these amazing bowling balls and doing ridiculous things with them and uh, they throw the ball so hard but I love it it's it's progress it's the new PBA and uh, I'm a fan 
I love it too. Guys, we're going to send it back to you. Really think, I noticed just a hint of jealousy, perhaps, from Marshall, <laughs> right? Chris Prather, Andrew Anderson, they hit the lanes next, and we're going to have the story of their union that almost fell apart. We welcome you back to Indy and the on-lane graphics to see you right now and throughout today's show, including the on-lane ball tracer, brought to you courtesy of Clutch Bowling. I love me some Never clutch. tire of these. Love me some Never clutch. Never tire of them. All right, so the step ladder has been updated. Your five seed Simonson and Barrett, one pin victors. They move on to match number two. The number three seeds. It was a 2018 PBA Player of the Year from Holly, Michigan, Andrew Anderson. His partner won the 2020 PBA Tournament of Champions for his first career major from Plainfield, Illinois, Christopher Prather. Got an early vibe about this one, Randy? You know, it, it's uh, it's kind of hard to tell. I mean, this guy right here is, is holding as good as anybody this season. Um, I think the question mark is going to be the health of Andrew Anderson. Mm -hmm. More on that in a moment with Kimberly Prather. Won the Tournament of Champions earlier this season up in Fairlawn, Ohio. Did it coming from the four seed spot. He's a three seed today. Going with a little loft early. Check this out. Loft meaning that ball is going to stay in the air a little bit longer than normal. And the players do that to try to to try to avoid early hook, early friction. You know, we, we're going to have to have that debate again about his nickname. I, I was going to get to that. He's got that little curl off the bang working today, which to me says Clark Kent it's, is in play. It's straight up Clark Kent. Right? It, there's not even a doubt. Yeah. Simonson. As I like to call him, the lumberjack mows down all 10. <laughs> Chops down all 10. Well, this lumberjack, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't have an axe. He just takes anything he's got in his arsenal and whacks it down. Watch this from profile. There it is, that bent elbow. I mean, that, that the is, left, the left arm underneath. Need the nose, Randy. Right. Need a, that's a yoga move. And then look how low he is to the foul line right here. And also note that he did change balls. He's gone to reactive resin. He threw the urethane ball in game one. Need a nose. Need a nose. No, thank you. Tom Barrett. Ooh, that did not sound good and doesn't look good either. He, he made a ball change as well and then went through the nose leaving the 410. So he's going to try to get his bowling ball over here to the left side of the four pin and cut it into the 10. This one converted just 4.5% of the time on the tour. What do you got, Tom? Four and all. Uh, safe enough. He's going to move deeper on that left lane. Yeah, I wasn't steep enough. Got up, there up next, Andrew Anderson and his partnership with Chris Prather was in doubt, Kimberly, not too long ago. So in September of last year, while at a competition in Sweden, Andrew and Chris decided to become doubles partners for this event. But the very next day, Andrew tweaked his knee and it was bad enough that he said Chris was sweating his decision to partner up with him. Now, even though Andrew is in some pain and possibly needs surgery, he reassured Chris that no matter what, he was going to be ready for this doubles competition. And staying true to his word, he is here today and they come in as the number three seed. It's that left knee, Kimberly, that's been bothering him. He says the best he felt in about four months as he cleans up the seven pin. He's gone through about four yeah, months say of the word quick, right? physical yeah. therapy, and he, 
it was interesting. He said, my physical therapist allows me to bowl. Rob, Rob he's 24. I had three knee surgeries on my, in, in my career on my left, all on my left knee. If he's having knee problems okay. now, boy, I, I'll tell you what, that's not a good thing. Yeah. Obviously, technology has changed, and, and you can be much more effective <sighs> under the knife these days. But you're right, man, 24. He's uh, and he hasn't had the surgery yet. Strike for his teammate, Prather. He said, the doctor says I need left knee surgery. Probably going to happen at some point this summer, but you know what that means, don't you? Three to four months right. out of action. Well, and if it happened during, you know, if, if, if it was a freak accident, he has to have it repaired. I get that. But if it happened from the sport of bowling at 24, especially as lean as he is, that's not a good sign. Yeah, it's not like he's putting a lot of weight no, no. on those knees. Simonson in the third, down 11. Come on, man. Come on, find one. So nice ball change for Simonson Dom. and Dom Barrett. We heard the two talking after Dom split. Dom's going to move in and try to go a little bit steeper, meaning he's going to try to cut and open up the front part of the lane a little bit more. There's Simonson's shot splitting the eight and the nine as it goes through the pin deck. Barrett over on the left lane. Yeah, he's curving it now, Rob. He's sending it. That's in between fourth and fifth arrow, almost on top of fifth arrow, and out to about the sixth or seventh board. So that's covering some real estate. So back-to-back -back jacks for Simo Barrett, former player of the year. Andrew Anderson steps up. Ooh. Well, that first shot that he threw on the right lane looked lazy, and then that one never hooked. As we take a look and see if we can see anything with his slide step, his left leg. I mean, he's still getting down pretty well on it. So the two shots that I've seen him throw on that lane, to me, tells me that the it, it, it may be the wrong bowling ball that he's using on that lane. It's just not very responsive. So he may need to go to something stronger. His teammate, Clark Kent clone, Chris Prather steps up. Man of Steel with steel tape on his fingers. You see that? 21 to 5. Got some support in the crowd Come tonight. On, Keep working. Wife Ashley here. Oh, look at this veteran move here. Covering up the mics while the two of them talk strategy. Next thing you know, they're going to put one of those manila folders yeah. in front of their mouth and discuss to one another. Prather just 28, sixth year on the tour. Simonson, just 23, his seventh year on the tour. Come on, mate. Come on. Did you just say, come on, mate? He's dead. <laughs> so he's been hanging out with yeah. Tom Barrett yeah. a little too long, yeah. my friend. When do you think Anthony Simonson has ever used the word mate Never. in his life? Yeah, no. <laughs> only, only when he bulls doubles with right? Dom. Right? <laughs> now, what word do you think Dom might have picked up from Simonson? None. None? No. <laughs> Remember the proper English? Oh he's, he's not picking up any, no. of, any of his bad this habits. This is great. This is great. Uh, Three strikes in a row. My man up top has got a sign if all 10 drop. Get down! Put it up, kid! <laughs> there he there is. is! I see it! <laughs> Hello, boy. Hey, Randy. Yeah. You know what starts one week from today? Uh, I can't wait for you to tell uh -huh. me. Uh-huh. We're going to tell you next as we wrap up match number two.
welcome you back to Royal Pin Woodland for the 2020 Mark Roth, Marshall Holman PBA Doubles Championship. And Kimberly, those four youngsters are in attendance for good reason. They absolutely are. So they are from the Flint Youth Bowling Association in Flint, Michigan, where Andrew Anderson bowled growing up. And Andrew told me that he still tries to go back there as often as he possibly can to work with youth. And today they are paying it forward. They drove five hours this morning to come watch their local hero compete on the national stage. Andrew from Holly, Michigan, about 40 minutes from Ann Arbor. He's a huge Wolverine fan. He was telling me he was at the big house for Ohio State, Michigan was right behind our Big Noon Saturday set that was on the field yelling at me incessantly. And you know, when people yell at me a lot, you know what I do, Randy? I typically lay low and ignore them. <laughs> I'm like, no, somebody, somebody does not care for me, let's, let's avoid it. He was actually a friendly, friendly face. I got you, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, when you said he's a huge Wolverine fan, I, I thought you meant X-Men. Yes, uh, yes. But thanks for clar that, clarifying that for me. And finally, a good shot on the right lane for Andrew as he Slows his ball speed down. It looks like gets around the side of it a little bit more and gets that bowling ball to finally finish in the 1-3 pocket. They needed that hit. <sighs> Clark Kent. Ooh, very un-Superman-like effort. I think he missed the transition. I think the lane broke down. It did get inside a target a little bit, but I mean, this is uh, the three, four, six, seven, ten. He's going to try to cut that three pin over into the four and the seven. The ball will take care of the six, ten. That's huge, it keeps minute. Watch the early call on this, there he goes. I think it was about halfway down the lane when he put his hand up and said, yep, that's got a chance, and boy did it. What a great shot. Just saved the universe and then takes a seat at the uh, desk at the Daily Planet. <laughs> Simonson, bam! Big shot. Mr. Big Shot. Come on, Domsey. Lead on. swelling to 36. Hey, Rob, did you see the uh, the clutch sign on the lanes there? They just showed you Yahtzee. Oh, did it? Yeah. Nice touch. World Series of Bowling coming your way next Sunday, Randy, 1.30 Eastern, live on FS1. First of five straight days of bowling coverage on FS1. World Series of Bowling 11. We're already at 11. Look how much we've grown. Live, 1.30 Eastern on FS1, also available on the Fox Sports app. It's the Cheetah Championship. Cheetah. Cheetah. Oh. Right. Good shot. 10 10. Yep. You know, we talked about it a couple weeks ago at the U.S. Mm. Open when Simonson left that uh, and had that bad carry late and gave Belmo that opportunity. But it just seems to me like when players play this much angle, that the odds of leaving that pin to the right there increase. Okay. Full score as we take a look at the Prather Anderson team that is now down 35. Anderson had all that momentum as 2018 PBA Player of the Year. Last year, injuries just led to a, a really challenging campaign. He had a torn tendon in his right middle finger. Talked about the left knee issues he had to overcome as well. So this is the best he felt in some time as. The young fans from Flint cheer on Andrew. Well, back-to-back -back shots for 
Andrew Anderson on that right lane that were perfect. They need them all. I mean, max score is 222 for them, and Simonson and Baird are already at 227. That's if they strike spare in the ninth and 10th. To have any chance, he has to strike. 7-10, come on. Well, that's a, a horrific break. You called him Clark Kent. He made that big split the last time he was up. The 7-10's only been made three times in the history of bowling on television. And none since 91. And the first one was by none Who other else? than Mark Roth. Roth. Mark Roth. 1980. Hammers to 10, leads to 7. Well, this match is over. Um, Simonson needs to stay upright behind the foul line. And the same for Don Barrett, and they're going to move on. for Anthony. And this one, much more breathing room for the team of Barrett and Simonson. So they move on to match number three, and while others have broken up on the PBA double circuit, up next, it's two longtime partners that feel their first doubles title is overdue. Marshall Kent and EJ Tackett. Year, Sean Rash and that man Matt Ogle climbed the ladder to capture the 2019 PBA Raw Pullman Championship title. In his first appearance on TV, the 34-year-old Ogle earned his first and so far only PBA Tour title. It was an emotional scene in Shawnee, Oklahoma. So, speaking of doubles, chemistry, styles, and sometimes just being able to get along makes for a successful doubles team. Bowling doubles is the subject of today's Go Bowling Presents Pressing Questions with Kimberly Pressler. All right, guys, so let's talk about the doubles tournament. What is one positive thing about doing a doubles tournament? Well, for me, it's like, oh, wow, I'm bowling with the guy. He's got 11 major championships. This is going to be great. He's going to strike every shot, uh, and it doesn't work out that way. What is one con about doing a doubles tournament? He blames me a lot. So I don't like getting blamed for bad bowling. The pros of a doubles event. Double is fun. What's the best thing about bowling with Wes on doubles? The fact that we won a couple of times. He is such a teddy bear. I mean, he's a big old bear, but he's a teddy bear. It's just fun to have success with another and be able to share it with uh, someone else. And what is a con? Well, a con is if you don't get a good partner, then you're kind of holding you back. <laughs> I don't want to have to bowl with him all the time. My grand plan would be to bowl with him uh, the entire week and then sub him out before the show starts. I'm the, really the, the anchor of the team. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Fortunately for me, uh, I bowl with this guy named Brad Miller, and uh, it helps me really get sharp in my game because I know I got to carry double the workload. Last year in the double tournament, Kyle and I made the show. We were the number one seed. I don't want to say I'm the reason we lost, but I definitely didn't contribute to a win. Luckily, since then, Brad has practiced his four pins. And, uh, you know, he did a little bit better on TV as last time. I think he actually threw a strike, so. Uh, <laughs> Just one strike, yes. Well, you know who's a pretty good team today? Don Damn Barrett, it. Anthony Simonson. One pin winners in match number one. Much more comfortable victory in match number two. They took it by 36 pins. Simonson, a perfect five for five in that second match. The number two seeds, four PBA Tour titles from Yakima, Washington, Marshall Kent. His partner, the 13 PBA Tour titles from Bluffton, Indiana, E.J. Tackett. So Kent will start us off. He and Tackett, for years, have been partners. It's their third show together. 
met about 10 years ago on Junior Team USA. EJ saying, yeah, we just, we vibed well. We took a break from one another. That break didn't go well, we rejoined forces. And here they are, two wins away from a tour title. Now, I'll tell you what, they'd like nothing better than to get another shot at Jesper Svensson and Kyle Troop. Yes, they have some history together. If there was a weak link, and I'm using that term awfully mildly, in match number one for the Barrett Simonson team, it, it was Anthony. Strikes in three of six frames, but he really picked it up last match where he was perfect for his five attempts, and now it's, he just keeps it going. Well, it's all about the ball change. He went from urethane to reactive resin. Remember, he went from the dark black ball to this green one. You can see how much more he's able to shape that reactive resin ball because, quite honestly, the cover stock, the cover stock is way more aggressive, way stronger. You got a better, bigger engine inside that ball, so it, it allows him to really open the lane up. We're talking to Dom yesterday, and he said, yeah, about game five of match play the other day, we just flip-flop lanes. <laughs> which caught you off guard. It's just not something you normally do. Yeah, they, typically the, the teams will, on the dual patterns, they'll stay, you know, the one player will stay on the one lane. Uh, and there's, typically there's a player that likes one lane more than the other. And uh, you put the, that teammate on the, on the lane, they're going to strike the most on. Three, six, nine, ten. Dom. Oh, missed the ten. Move up four and close. Well, he said he moved four left and it wasn't even close. And that's how much that left lane <laughs> is breaking down. The good news for Jesper Svensson and Kyle Troop, Jesper's left-handed and will probably bowl on that left lane. Again, Svensson and Troop, your one seeds, waiting the winners of this match. DJ Tackett on court's one in the second. Oh, nine eluding contact. Yeah, that ball goes right through it. Look at this. He's going 20 to three. Watch this. And the bowling ball just goes right past the nine. He goes, bye-bye. Right, I've been a little anger in that spare toss there from EJ. Right, Tackett and Kent, we talked about them and the relationship going back 10 years ago to Junior Team USA, and it has continued. EJ and Natalie married in November of last year. There's Marshall in the wedding party. Ronnie Russell there. Ronnie Russell and his wife, yeah. Well. Ah, With Natalie. There she is. She's, she's wonderful. <laughs> Big music buff. You know who, uh, you know who Natalie's going to Vegas to go listen to? Tell them. In a couple weeks? Jonas Brothers. Jonas Brothers. Jonas Brothers. They're having, uh, what is it, one of those deals where you take over one of the hotel concert halls, you just kind of bunker down for a week or two or a month. That's huh. what the Jonas Brothers are doing. She's, she's schlepping out there. Girls trip to Vegas. Nice. For the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> Things Rob and Randy will never do together. Oops, too hard. The ne Jonas Brothers road trip. We'll never go see the Jonas Brothers together. No. Yeah. Marshall's going with loft, a lot of speed, and a lot of hand, and, and you can see just how sparky the left lane is getting. Sparky. Yeah, it's starting to uh, it's starting to heat up pretty good over on that left that left lane. Three, six, ten, drop. This, Boy, is, this is what doesn't make any sense to me. What, how much this game has changed? The right lane is the shorter pattern, which means there's more friction, more hook. The left lane is the longer pattern, so slicker, right? But they're actually able to play farther right on the shorter pattern than they do on the left lane. It's like backwards. Yep. Simonson, a strike in the first. Here he is in the third. Back to back, Jacks. Come on, mate. There it is again. Come on, mate. Come on, Dobbsy, find one here. <laughs> it's, it, it is, it, it's not Anthony. It's not Anthony to use the word mate. I'll tell you what. Dom some, has infiltrated his brain. Yeah, in a good way. But since he changed to that green ball, 
Hunt's IQ Emerald, uh, he hasn't missed. So you're saying that was a good ball change? I think so, pretty good, right? Here's his mate, Dom Barrett, over on the left to start the fourth. So he goes high, makes the big move left, and throws it pretty good. And when it goes light like that, that's a, that's your worst nightmare because you just went high, you make the adjustment, and now it doesn't hook enough. Now what do you do? He's going to probably try to inch back just a little bit or stay where he is and just throw it a little bit softer to get it to come around the corner. takes care of the 2-4. Head on over to PBA.com. Check out all, right. all the latest officially licensed PBA apparel and merchandise. Items include hats, t-shirts, replica jerseys of PBA's stars, and jerseys you can actually customize as well. Head over to PBA.com. Click on the Shop PBA link of the main menu to get shopping. My buddy is back home at the, the golf club. They always want me to get them PBA swag. Mm -hmm. So I'll go to PBA.com and go to the you store and buy some they actually, stuff. They got a store right here. A pop-up shop. Pick some stuff up right now. Messenger! Yeah! <laughs> that was a great call, Rob. You saw it coming. It wasn't the fastest or most violent, but it's still a messenger. Headpin gets redirected, but still has enough weight to clip the 10. <laughs> mm -hmm. I tell you what, messengers can brighten up anybody's day. Oh, yeah. Now his partner, Marshall Kent. Let's go, Marshall! A little walk, a little bounce, and a whole lot of bang. I promise you, he watched the shot that Don Barrett threw when he went light. That one didn't suck. No, it certainly did not, Marshall. What a beautiful shot here. They're working on a strike. There's the loft just inside a fifth arrow. Out to about six. And that time the ball clips the nine. Big double. Right now, right now this battle is being won and lost on that left lane. Yes. For the most part, Tackett and Simonson are just trading volleys here on the right lane. Simonson looking for another strike since that ball changed. Woo! Came back from the gutter to drop all 10. He's got the whole right side of the lane with that ball. And you could see that that was actually farther right down lane and it almost went high. Almost. Great luck there at how far right he can get that ball. Didn't have a lot of real okay. estate left to play with over yeah, there, my friend. About an inch and a half. This is where they need a strike. The left lane has been difficult for Dom. It's awful. I think that was poorly executed. You heard Dom say that was awful. He tried to go with a little loft and a little softer speed, and I think he got it inside of target. Bear <laughs> takes care of that spare. When we return, we wrap up our semis next. Who is going to advance to take on Kyle Troop and Jesper Svensson? Oh, Marshall Kent, E.J. Tackett. Oh, that, that's a team right there during the break. Maybe enjoying the music a little too much. They're certainly enjoying their lead here in the semifinals. You know who we've enjoyed working with? Yes. Yes, Janae, we're looking at you. Janae Haggerty, head of events and marketing. 17 years she's been on the tour. This yeah. is sadly her last event with us. One of the great faces and personalities we look forward to seeing every single week 
were on the tour. You remember her first event? Do you know what it was? December 7, 2003, Windsor Locks, Connecticut. What happened that day? I don't remember. Major Mika. 300. 300. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's how she started her PBA career. Hey, you got to give me a shot at, at uh, giving uh, Janae a shout out. You know, I've worked with her for 17 years. And, you know, I think Tom Clark said it best. She was the glue that kept this tour together. Um, the countless hours that she put in, and her hard work and dedication to the players and to the tour. Ah, she's the best. Unbelievable. Man, we're, man, we're gonna miss her. Yep. Idle Pearl for Marshall Kent on the left lane. And the lead now is 39. Crossing 19 boards from the arrows to the break point. You can see when the player lets go of it, the brain knows immediately, based on the feel, whether or not the shot was any good. Four strikes in a row for that team. Simonson steps up. He has just been beautiful on this right lane. He gets another Come strike. On. Right out of here, let's go. He's been perfect. Find one. He's been carrying his mate, Dom Barrett, on, throughout the semifinal. They can max out with a 228. Down 39, though. Dom has got to figure out this left lane. Has to. He's going to a different layout in that same ball. You can see that gold pin above his finger holes right there, next to his left hand. The ball he was using was a pin down. It was underneath. The inserts, that one's up. That, that's going to make the ball go longer, travel longer down the lane before it starts to curve. Yeah. Good shot. Problem is it pushed just about three feet too far down the lane before it started to go left and came in behind the head pin. Dom has yet to strike on the left lane in this match. Sometimes it doesn't matter how well you execute, Rob. And that 10 pin wants to be in one of those moves. <laughs> how much you can do about it. Honorary. Honorary. Honorary 10 pin. Nasty, gnarly. Mean little sucker down there. Running out of rev right. Running out of angle. Now EJ Tackett working on a four bagger can increase the lead to 49. And you see the max score 267 for Kent Tackett. Randy, take out the dice and throw me a Yahtzee! There it is. Yeah, clutch. Well, it looks like it's going to shape up to be a, a rematch from 2017 with Marshall Kent, EJ Tackett taking on Jesper Svensson and Kyle Troop. And in that title match, Jesper and Kyle shot 279 at these guys. Go, baby, let's go! Done. Come on! They're moving on to the title match. Moving on to meet up with number one seeds Jesper Svensson and Kyle Troop. That's coming up, but first, what job did Kyle leave behind to become a pro bowler? That answer next. In 2015, here at Woodland Bowl, the number one seeds Norm Duke, Wes Malott, cruised to the victory at the title match of the Roth Holman PBA doubles. Took care of your five seats, Dom Barrett and Oscu Palermo. Tenth title for Wes, 38 for Norm. Those two opening a tall and small shop for the strip mall in Big D later this spring. We take a look at your final score, a convincing 73 point, 73 pin victory rather for Kent and Tackett. That 263, the high score put up today. Our in the pocket feature this week. 
takes a closer look at one of the most flamboyant players on the tour. Kyle Troop is in the pocket. You know, it really hit me that I could I could bowl for a living and really, you know, do this as a career. Probably about 2016, yeah, you know, I was managing Wendy's at the time. That was kind of the moment where I gave it the full commitment, you know, 100% because this is how I'm going to make my living now and you know, I want to be successful at it. You know, luckily, I've been blessed with a uh, electric personality at times and I guess popularity you could say sometimes that comes with my style and my hair but you know seeing the fans you know going through airports or just random places like hey you're the guy with the fro tells me that I'm you know doing my part and kind of helping grow bowling and you know trying to be a little more entertaining and just make the sport fun. As Kyle mentioned he is easily he is easily the most recognizable player on the PBA Tour. Uh, looks a little focused right there, but, uh, but off camera, he's always so upbeat, so jovial. But it's really been a test for him the last couple of weeks with the passing of his mother. Yeah, it really has. And, you know, when we, we spoke with him uh, the other night, he said that he has a whole new outlook on life. And, um, like, one of his quotes was, it's a great day to be alive. Uh, he, he did say that the one thing he misses the most is not being able to call his mom and tell her how well he bowled that day. Yeah. So that, that's still kind of weighing on him. But um, I'll tell you what, his dad's here this week. Yeah. And, um, you know, he, I know he's still hurting inside, but you wouldn't know it by looking at it. They're both hurting. Yeah. Uh, but a wonderful opportunity today to let a little bit more of that healing process mm -hmm. take hold. A victory today with dad in attendance. My goodness, how yeah. good would that feel for the Troop family? So Kyle Troop and the Iceman cometh. Jesper Svensson, those two, your one seeds, are uninterrupted title match coming your way next. It's Svensson and it's Troop set to take on your number two seeds of Marshall Kent and E.J. Tackett. It's the title match of the Roth Holman doubles next. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling for promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you. Log on to GoBowling.com. downtown Indianapolis we bring you inside Royal Pin Woodland it is title time at the 2020 Mark Roth Marshall Holman PBA doubles championship your two seats Marshall Kent and EJ Tackett just took care of your five seats Dom Barrett and Anthony Simonson up next the number one team of Troop and Svensson the number one seeds Eight PBA Tour titles from Gothenburg, Sweden, Jesper Svensson. His partner with four PBA Tour titles from Taylorsville, North Carolina, Kyle True. That duo already with one doubles title. It came in 2017 in one of our favorite places, Bayside Bowl in Portland, Maine. Yeah, these guys got off to a slow start with nine spare, nine spare, and then struck out for 279. But the matching outfits. Is yeah. The pick out was in play by Kyle True. That's kind of his coming out party yeah. as well. And who did they take care of in that title match? Yeah, the guys that they're about to face right now, EJ Tackett and Marshall Kent. You want to know a funny story? I asked Jesper, I said, how come no matching outfits this year? And he pointed at Kyle and said, I don't want to look like that. Yesler <laughs> uh, has really been the driving force of this duo this week. Got to run, run fast. Words he kept barking at his teammate. Yesper was just strike after strike after strike. And the lefty drops another 10. Just struck a 10 this week. Strongest strike ball on tour right there. At almost 20 miles an hour and just shy of 600 RPMs, the unique style of Jesper Svensson. When he has his look, nobody strikes more than him on the tour. Late kick of the 
seven for Tackett. And we had a, a look at that messenger that delivered for him in the last match. Gets the late kick of the seven there. This is a guy you get the feeling just needs a little more luck to get him back into the winner's circle. I, I tell you what, I, I've always thought that EJ Tackett's carry is not the best out here. Uh, he sure hits the pocket an awful lot. I've seen him leave some horrific taps when he hits the pocket. Marshall Kent left a target. We saw it in the last match. The left lane was the undoing for Dom Barrett and Anthony Simonson. The team of Svensson and Troop. Svensson's left-handed bowling on that left lane. There's a lot of blue oil missing from that left lane. There's plenty oh, left on Jesper's side. Mm -hmm. Right. Look at that big gap. I mean, you can see just how just how dry it is in here. And that's how deep the players are already. And he did all week, and he's staying with it. Watch how straight this is. Well, about 11 to six. So five boards in all. Meanwhile, Anthony Simonson was covering about 20. Pitch black for Jesper. His typical go-to equipment. to start for Troop and Svensson. Excuse me. Dirtier than a gas station bathroom right there. EJ carving it open on that right lane. Today on Fox, a duel in the desert as the NASCAR Cup Come Series on. heads to Phoenix, where Kyle Busch will look to defend last year's victory. All the action from the track, it starts 3.30 Eastern on Fox and always available on the Fox Sports app. Former Rookie of the Year, Marshall Kent. On that left lane. That nice. Well, it was light. It got to the pocket, but again, you remember, I go back to Don Barrett, who struggled on that left lane. He went high, he went light, he went high, he went light. First shot for Marshall in the second frame, he went high, and, and this time he goes a little light, carries that light mixer. Troop up, working on a triple. Both Kyle and Jesper using the same type of bowling ball. Oh no. Get in your home! Paralyzer five. Yeah, Guppy there, doesn't believe it. There's Guppy, eight time winner on the PBA tour. He's like, you gotta be kidding me. That's something I would leave, not my son. Look at this. Five almost moved to the four spot. Yeah. Unreal. So you put your hand up when somebody's shooting a five pin. And if your hand is up and that player misses the five pin, they have to buy. They have to buy you a drink. So that's why your hand was up? Yeah, that, that's, that's why my hand was up. Kyle takes a seat after converting that spare. So Svensson Troop, strike, 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 nine spare. Svensson to start the fifth on the left. Oh, look at that icy stare. 
I mean, there's just everything about him is so intimidating. So the way he throws it, the way he delivers it. So it, so good. And then his demeanor after his ball just runs over the pins. Tackett's turn on the right. We close out the fifth. I mean, this is just a, another duplicate of the last shot he threw on that lane that he struck. And this time the six goes around. Watch six, three. six did a cartwheel around Yeah, it the sure did. There were some great reactions, not only by Marshall Ken, his partner, but that gentleman in the audience had both hands over his eyes. Pick me up, man, come on. EJ, I'll tell you what, he looked great the last time we saw him on television. He looks great today. He's executing beautifully now. I think this is going to be the telling shot for this team. One high, one light, and the left lane kind of getting a little dirty. Again, uninterrupted coverage of the title match here at the Mark Roth Marshall Holman PBA Doubles Championship. Ten pins separating these two. Mm -hmm. There's Terry Powell, the GM here at Royal Pin Woodland. What a what a job they do here for us. I mean, over the years, it's been just. An amazing really place good. to come to, and Jim Doty, and before him, Don Mitchell, both are in the PBA Hall of Fame, and just an absolute awesome place to compete. They Only one facility, Randy, has hosted the PBA more often. Yeah. The Showboat Lanes, which no longer exists right. in Vegas. Light again. Hmm, that left the four. Yeah, that urethane ball is struggling to get up the hill. No Indy well. This right here, long time stop on the tour. Of course, we were in Fairlawn at AMF Riviera Lanes a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. for the TOC. We're off to Vegas. A week from today, PBA World Series begins five straight days of PBA action on FS1. I might need to borrow some money. Get help. Go! Look at that shot on strike track. It was just a mirror image. Look at those eyes. Yo, come on. On your way. Come on. EJ can't believe this shot here that didn't get back up to the pocket. Two, four, eight. If he covers this, they'll still only trail by 10. Four strikes and now three spares for the Kent team. Yeah, it looked like a good shot to me as well, EJ. Teammate, Marshall Kent steps up. Well, no, no matter what, Marshall, even with a strike here in the eighth frame, cannot shut out Troop and Stenson.
That had some air time. Let it roll. It's now true. He started with the strike. Since then, spare, spare for the man who won the Jonesboro Open earlier this season. Big shot here. His partner hasn't missed yet. Troop, there it is! One of your best. Take every rack if you want it. Puts the gorgeous touch on this one right here. I'll tell you what, Paralyzer, four, a five pin in the fourth, and then that Little light four pin in the six, so they could have the front eight easily. Come on, man. This means so much for so many more people than yourself. Come on. Oh. Hands went to the back of the head oh. immediately. Oh, man. He had a lot of external chatter to himself ahead of that shot as well. And now they're in jeopardy of losing. And he just left himself with the toughest spare that's not a split or a washout. Two, four, seven, eight, I believe is what he left. I can't see it. Yep, two, four, seven, eight. Five max score for Troop Stetson, 239, Kent Tackett. If he would have missed that, then all they, they would have, all Kent and Tackett would have needed was a double, and it was, it would have been a shutout, but they're still alive, but barely. If Tackett doesn't strike on this ball, Troop can get up and strike out in the 10th and shut him out. Sure, that one hooked. Come on. Come on. All right, Marshall Kent with a strike here. They'll be in the 220s. If he doesn't strike on this ball, Troop needs a mark in the 10th. <sighs> Left to target. That's that good, too. Well, it was way inside a target down at the break point and Ooh. at the arrows. And it looked like he jumped all over, which made that ball break loose and go high. Even if he converts, Kyle Troop just needs a mark and good count. And they'll win their second Roth Holman doubles title. Wow, did this flip flop back and forth real quick, didn't it? It's the beauty of pro sports, Randy, and an open frame. Unfortunate way to finish. Troop and Stenson don't even need a mark. Six. Okay, buddy. Pins. And it is over. Remember, six, pins, six pins on the first ball, done. Remember how much the Troop family has been through of late. A re-rack was just called by Kyle. Well, that man right there has been going through a lot as well with his father and his father. His father's doing great recovering from brain cancer. We're gonna see him in Las Vegas, but some hardware really close to being handed to Kyle Troop. Lost his mother just a couple weeks ago. His father, Guppy, in attendance. Right behind him, there he is on the right side of the frame with the yellow glasses, and he's got that fear and loathing in the PBA look going today. But let me tell you, Guppy and Kyle are going to explode in celebration.
Oh, there is some release that's about to happen yep. right now for Guppy and certainly for his son as well. Come on, Kyle. Good. Give him the title! Give him the title! Up, you let it out, man. Beautiful stuff there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So happy for that oh, family. Yeah. So is EJ. Look how classy EJ Tackett is. Oh, man. I think it's relief for Svensson as well because yep. he knew what was going on for Kyle. Yep. You know, what a title means for him and his dad and the entire family. All he needed was six. Ten will do the trick. Kimberly with our winners. There's so much emotion on the lanes right now. Jesper, let's talk to you real quick. So you were perfect coming all the way into the ninth, and then you went a little bit high. What happened there? Oh, damn, I don't know. Like, it's just... <laughs> it's a blur at this point. I just tried to slow my heart down, and it didn't work, so... You know, I'm glad I can make the spare and, and um, well, yeah, I don't know what to say, really. Like, it's so much emotions for this win, obviously. To have my boy back and, uh, man, it means so much for so many more people than myself and him, so it's hard. Well, I don't normally see this much emotion and excitement out of you, so talk to me about what it means for you to win this with Kyle during this 2020 season. It means everything, um, especially for what him and his family have been going through, obviously. I couldn't be more proud and happy to have him back and, and do this with me, and there's nobody else I would prefer doing this with than Kyle. And Kyle, you seem to be bowling with purpose today. What was that purpose? We said a month ago that we were going to win this tournament for Mom, and that's exactly what we did. Um, we were leading coming in. We. We were struggling a little bit leading up to the match. We couldn't settle down. But, uh, you know, I just told him we're some of the best bowlers in the world, and we just got to make five good shots apiece, and we, we executed some really good shots. You absolutely did, and I have no doubt that your mom is smiling down on you right now. And then you have your dad, Guppy, over here, who's brought to tears. What does it mean to have him here watch you win this? So special to have Guppy here to watch myself and Jesper win. Uh, I would say Jesper's a part of the family, and this is a big win for our entire family. And uh, Perry, his buddy that came down too, um, you know, this is a dream come true to win in front of my father again. But Gup, I only got three more titles, and then I caught you. So <laughs> you better be ready. Oh, this is some fighting words right there. Well, congratulations on winning the doubles championship again. And right now, we're going to have Mr. Marshall Holman, per tradition, come out here and sign those trophies. Congratulations, guys. So Marshall takes out the Sharpie and inks up the hardware. What a victory for Kyle Troop and his father, Guppy, just weeks after the passing of his mother and his wife, Sherry Troop. We will see you next Sunday when we kick off World Series of Bowling 11, coming your way live from the South Point Hotel and Casino in Vegas. That's the first of five straight days of PBA cover. There's nothing to pick out, Marshall. What a doubles win again for the number one seeds, Jesper Svensson and Kyle Troop. They take it 234 
to 205. Another title for the Iceman and for Kyle Troop, his fifth PBA Tour title. We'll see you next week and all of next week from Las Vegas. Doubles is done. We're off to the World Series of Bowling.